It's raining today. A humid early spring in North Carolina. The birds and bugs are retaking their territory, and later, the horny bullfrogs will join the parade. A symphony of mystery and newness. And there's an overhanging peace that accompanies the melancholy of a broken world. And there's memories like raindrops. Memories of a long life expressed in a single light storm. There was a time where I would live for the ramble and the playing with words. It's when I'd aimlessly travel the metro cars with my notebook underground and atop the streets in Los Angeles. I was bright hearted and full headed, but very troubled, troubled with an ego the size of my heartbreak. I was a musician. In fact, I felt like I was the best musician in the whole world. And while others slept, except of course for the delinquents, I would drive up and open the private garage door to a creator's paradise. VIP access to a world-class recording studio. As a teenager, at first I didn't have any instruments, but I found a drum machine and I used my voice for all sorts of weird things. And there was an undeniable greatness in this graveyard dreaming. And you know, maybe I was the best in the world inside that vacuum. I never really shared my music with anyone though. And still to this day, I haven't. Then it was too private or personal or perfect without any critique. And it wasn't for them anyway. It was for me. For me, my music was my healing. And that music came to this epiphany before my daughter was born. And then the news of her coming harmonized perfectly with the ending of an old life. The sinuous and isolated, tumultuous life disguised in art and music. The news of our baby was enough to sober me. It was the last time I had a drink, the last time I disappeared. It was the end of sauntering and babbling and hypothesizing. It was the beginning of doing and of being. It was when I could begin living by understanding that my life was more than just myself. I could escape this vacuous misery of the ego and enjoy the freedom of servitude. I could live for her and for others. She set me free, really. And after she was born, Veronica went back to work. I think the same change was growing in her work and her ambitions had changed. I stayed home with the baby. This baby would not sleep. She wouldn't cuddle. She wouldn't relax. She required constant attention. But my mind was able to wander and I was able to dream and everything had changed and I wanted to ensure that it stayed that way. So we decided to create another type of baby a business baby. <laughs> Veronica quit work and we started the pod sound school podcast. We were like teenagers or young college students. We poured ourselves into research and we just started with where we were and what we could teach best. So for me, it was audio production. And for Veronica, it was writing research, marketing, and mindset. We had no idea how we were going to do it or where the income would come from exactly, or what we could possibly sell or what services we could offer. But we knew if we started from a desire to have fun and to lift people up, that that was all that was required. We really felt like the world needed us to be brave and to be fearless and to let go of the bonds of our own pasts and of others' opinions and step into the world. It was just a baby, a little baby business with a simple premise. We would teach podcasters how to improve the audio on their podcasts. It could be like an ongoing audio school for podcasters. So at first Veronica had no intention of participating as the talent in the business. She was going to be the manager off camera and off mic and the writer, but that wasn't any fun. And she had been behind the scenes in her corporate gigs and throughout school. So she really needed to try. And as awkward and as terrifying as it was for her, she tried, she got uncomfortable and she joined me in headphone land in front of a microphone. And at the very beginning, we animated ourselves for our YouTube videos, but it didn't take very long in our research to understand the necessity of being the face of our brand. And the first time I was on camera was an embarrassing fireworks display of insecurities. First, I forced Veronica to put makeup on me and then 
forced her to parade around with me as I spouted out about what I would say and why I would say it. And then finally I had to ask her to leave. And, and after hours of failed takes and temper tantrums, I threw in the towel and trashed the whole day's work. But the next day I didn't take myself so seriously. I didn't need makeup. And I remembered that these videos weren't like my music. They weren't my medicine. They weren't for me. This time my creations were for others to help them. And that made it easy. So we obsessively researched keywords. We surveyed and listened. We reviewed hundreds and hundreds of podcasts. We read every possible podcasting publication or article. We attended any possible podcasting conference and week by week, we created videos and podcast episodes to help podcasters and creators. And soon we took on our first client and then another and another. And then we created our first online course, smart and sexy podcast launch. And she was our real baby. This was going to change everything. We sold the course before we even created it. And then for seven weeks, we pulled all nighters and created the best of the best podcasting courses. Since then we've created three other courses and currently we're completely redesigning smart and sexy podcast launch into smart and sexy podcasting 2.0. And as I sit here with the window open to hear the rain, recollecting not only on the past few years of our business, but also on the past years of my creative life, I'm filled with a uh, warm melancholy. I'm held in the duality of joy and sadness joy because our business baby is more clear and focused and confident than she's ever been, but sadness because she's growing up. And this episode is a special one for me this day in the rain with you. That's why I wanted to entertain the old poet in me and share a little of my music with you. I've been an artist for as long as I can remember, but it's only been these last few years with the pod sound school that my creations have meant anything. And it has been an immense joy to help so many like-minded artists and humans on their journey. But this episode is officially the last episode of the pod sound school podcast. And it's the birth of our new baby that we named content hefe. So starting next week in your podcast player, you'll see a new show content hefe by pod sound school. And we'll be keeping the previous Pod Sound School podcast episodes, including this one, as season one. And moving forward, season two will be Content Hefe. And Content Hefe, as it sounds, is the pursuit of becoming content creation bosses with a very simple focus better content, more money. Each week, we're going to share insights and research and stories and tips for becoming a content hefe. I hope you'll join us and I hope you'll accept my gratitude and also agree to a favor. If you haven't yet started your podcast or begun putting content out into the world, if your passions and thoughts and ideas and talents have just been something that you've kept for you, will you let them out? Will you please share yourself with us, with people like you start a podcast, make videos, write blog posts, share it yourself and serve others, make a little baby business and watch it grow up into something truly great. We'll catch you on the next episode, which is the first episode of Content Efe. Love, Studio Steve, and the Pod Sound School.